Hi friends, so today I'm going to be shooting a video about mounting an INCRA fence system to a rigid R4512 table saw that I just finished assembling this weekend. And um, to make the process go easier, I built a 32 inch by 32 inch um, assembly table. And it's just a little inexpensive, quick whack together table with some scrap lumber to make it easier for me to have a little more workspace. Um, so I'm guessing that these are the rails because they're really long. So we'll start with opening these and see what they are. really nicely packaged and on that note uh, I had somebody leave me a really nasty comment um, on my other video that they didn't like my assembly video so let's just get that out of the way right now I'm not gonna operate the saw this is just a video about putting the fence on the saw so if you were here to see the saw work and to see the fence work uh, this isn't your video check back soon um, but uh, these are really nice rails they will go in here more or less like this and that gives me quite a bit of space so i'm just going to set them over here for this on the side for the moment i'm really excited about these uh, i have wanted one of these fences for a really long time and i'm hoping it solves all of my accuracy headaches that i had with a delta unisaw and in case you haven't seen my other videos I thought the Delta Unisaw was a piece of trash. Um, it was a very heavy saw and it could not be updated to modern safety features like a riving knife. And that made it just very, very dangerous. So this is cool. There is a free DVD included with the kit. It's nice to know when you spend $400, they give you a DVD. It's an 82 minute DVD on the LS positioner. And I think I already have one of these because it came with the router table, but it's still cool. Um, and in case you haven't watched my other video yet on the router table, the router table comes with this absolutely amazing book that has all of these beautiful illustrations and I'll bring these a little closer all these beautiful illustrations that show exactly how to use the tool and um, it's just really really well done so there's a set of instructions and yet another cheap <laughs> uh, wrench um, so these instructions are a little different from the ones with the router table um, one of the things that I find really neat is that Inkra has taken the time to engineer cardboard packaging so they don't have to use foam. So all of this cardboard will absolutely recycle here in the city of Houston. And then here is my um, lead screw system. And this is longer, so this is going to mount over here and will be used to run the um, fence in and out. Again, really well packaged like everything else I've bought from Incra. And then there is a third box which contains the table saw mount. And I, I can say that this mounting system w is really solid. I've been really, really impressed. I played with it just a little bit on the table saw, I mean on the router table, which right now is doubling as a junk table. Um, yeah, that just, I think that happens in all of our shops, to be honest. So 
So there's some more um, mounting instructions. And then this is, I believe, the cross member. Yeah, this is the one of the cross members, and they use it. They use it. Uh, this reminds me of a lot of eighty twenty, which is an industrial. Um, it's often called the industrial rector set, but they use a lot of eighty twenty like material, where you have a lot of little T slots. Um, again, more mounting hardware. There's a second mount. These are really heavy duty. These are like three sixteenths of an inch, maybe two, three millimeter. These are probably four or five. No, they've got to be at least. This is like five sixteenths of an inch. It's probably metric, really heavy duty mounts. Big bag of hardware. More mounts and locking devices of some sort. And I don't worry too much about this because I know that Inkra will explain what all these things are when I get to that stage. And then another device of some sort, um, you know, this might have been the fence. I'll bet you that's the fence. I just don't know what this is. Uh, it looks like this could be the mount for this. So, you know, we'll figure it out here in a second. Uh, first things first, I'm going to stop filming and get rid of all this cardboard and get out of my shop. Alright, so um, this is really weird. They sent a set of instructions on the positioner that applies to the router table. So I don't know if maybe it's just a hint on how to use the positioner. I don't know. The other manual talks about how to mount the rails and how to level them and how to set the, the table saw fence up. So this is the one we'll be working with and I'm not really sure what that one's for. So I'm just set it over there. Um, so first things first, I need to mount the, um, the rail bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the saw so I can work on one side of this at a time. And the rail mounts are these things and it looks like there's three on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out and I'm not sure why there's six, but That's not cool. Set that puppy down. So it looks like there's just two extra of these. It's kind of expensive to do that, but... And then let's see. So hardware pack B2. And I've got a bunch of fasteners in here. So bag two. And then we'll just put everything back over here. So, these appear to fit. Although I don't think these are long enough. It appears that's all we get. bag. It 
So it pays to read the instructions. These are all the rail hardware, and these are all the, the rail bracket hardware. And I was sitting there going, man, these seem really um, short for this. So at this point, I need to start putting these in. Well, this is interesting. The, the bolts on the front and the bolts on the back are two different sizes. And they're going to have to be drilled out. So, let's work on the front and we'll come back to the back. So it turns out that the, the heads on these are 9 sixteenths. Yep, they're the same on both sides. Okay, so um, these actually happen to be part of a different piece. And they go like this, and then you clamp them with a C-clamp. And they double as spacers to indicate where this is supposed to go. And then at that point you can loosen these. which will let the um, rail drop down into position.
All right, and once this is dropped down to the position, now you can start tightening it back up. And this is a clever way to do this. Now I'm still just a hair off here, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen this back up and slide it down. So now we got the first rail on here and it's strong enough to pick the uh, saw up without flexing too much. Hopefully I'll never have to pick the saw up with it, but I've chosen to level mine here. It says you're supposed to do 45 inches, but I, I've just chosen to do this because it gives me a little bit more flexibility in terms of how I want to run this. And that will let me take advantage of nearly the full length of this. So once I get this situated, I'll, I'll probably move the rails to maximize the right side because I really don't expect to put this on the left side. I suppose there's reasons to do it. I just can't think of them off the top of my little head. So um, for the moment, that's how this is going to go. Now what I need to do is I need to reposition this because I need to figure out what size these bolts are and then I need to drill it. And this would be a nightmare if I didn't have casters built into my saw, but because I have casters built in, this is relatively easy to move around. And that's the whole reason that I did this. That drop is just a little harsh. Okay, so this is cast iron and it generally drills really smoothly. But you want to drill it slowly. So there you go. You just go slow and gentle, firm but gentle pressure. It generally creates dust. You go too fast, you run a substantial risk of uh, fracturing the cast iron. And if you go just nice and slow, you shouldn't have any issues, at which point uh, I'm still just a little short. So I need to find a little bit bigger drill bit. And, and it's not uncommon to have to do this in steps.
So I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, C-clamps in and these will help me set the level for the track. Cannot get a wrench up in there. So I was able to get a offset wrench up in there and that lets me get that nice and tight. But it is a really, really tight fit. The other side's not going to play that way. There's just not clearance there. So now we insert the clamps and these just go in the end here. And then we have an end stop that goes in here. We'll just set that there. So each of these gets a glide pad and the glide pads let it slide back and forth. All 
All right, so the next step is to take the support and take the ends out so that you can bolt it to each of these. So I'm kind of breaking the rules here. I just turned this upside down because I think it'll be easier to line all these up. So I need to find the hardware for this. And it looks like it's Allen bolts, except that I don't have enough of them. A little bit touchy because these all these little nuts have to line up on the bottom of here and they have to not be in too much or they won't fit. So now we need to figure out roughly where the middle is. I don't happen to have a machinist square, so I'm going to use a builder square instead because this is going to get me very much into the, the vicinity of where I need to be. So it is 34 inches outside to outside, so that means the center of this thing is 17 inches. And this is six and a quarter, which is three and an eighth. So, thirty-four and an eighth divided by half is seventeen and sixteenths. Seventeen and sixteenths minus three and an eighth. should be like 14 inches. Okay. And that's really close. So now what we need to do is just square this and now it's good. It's going to be not perfect, but it's going to be really close. Two pieces of cardboard in here that are for attaching the fence. And these go under here like this. But not yet. And now I can bring these in and mark where zero is. And I 
actually I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the rails. Because I can't do anything with that space down there. But I can do something with this. Okay, so I'm part way there. I've got to loosen these a little bit. They're still too tight. That gives me a little bit of space on the other side. I really don't think I'll put the positioner down there, but... Now what I'm going to do is adjust the scale to get this zeroed. And now I do still need to attach this and I think that can just snap into these little T holes and so what I need to do is figure out what of this is going to fit through here almost oh that's so frustrating so I may have to drill out these holes in order to make them big enough so I'm not going to mess with that right now that'll be a separate video um, so I think that's it for tonight Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me assemble an anchor table saw fence to a rigid table saw. And um, I've got a bunch of hardware left over, but that's not tonight's project. Tonight's project was simply to get this together because this marks the beginning of my ability to actually try and build cabinets. Um, I've still got some tuning to do in terms of tuning the saw and inserting uh, the blade guards. And uh, I'll shoot a video to finish that up. Um, that'll be the third video on this saw. But for now, this is it, and uh, I appreciate you watching my video.